All right, hello everybody. Coming to you from uh, sunny Connecticut here, where it's kind of weird. The leaves in my backyard haven't started to change, but the leaves in the front yard have. All right, anyway. Well, I mean, the front yard's higher than the backyard. Maybe that has something to do with it. Anyway, well, I might as well show you this Neo while I have it up here. I did a short on this, but this is kind of an interesting dynamic to look for in the markets, right? When a market's going down, or when a market's going up, we're going to look at one that's going down. They don't go in straight lines. They go in this, like, set of it's like a staircase where each trading range in a down market is lower than the one before it so what was the bottom of one range could become the top of the next range and we could see that here when that that happens because of our buyer's remorse people buy at the bo bottom here then the price eventually goes below their buy price they say man if it gets back to my level i'm going to sell so i can get out of break even so buyer's remorse turning support into resistance is a very common thing in the market so it happened here happened here now this is the interesting thing that i want to draw your attention to this level that was support did not become resistance so when that dynamic kind of fades away from the market when when the resistance oh, i'm sorry when the support stops becoming resistance it's a characteristic of a market bottom so we have this big move but we're running into some resistance here right around 485 so if this thing breaks 485 it maybe gets to like 490 or so I think there might be a, a good play there on the long side. All right, let's go take a look at the S&P here. Yeah, so this is some more negative action. Not not really surprising. I know that everyone's talking about the job numbers tomorrow, but, you know, the market looks pretty weak technically. And, uh, you know, after we get a big sell-off like this, there's really been no kind of a rebound. And here, the level that was support is starting to turn into resistance and that's what sets the stage for the next move lower like we just saw with neo and we're getting to levels that we had gapped through on the way up so one of the main reasons why we get support is because you get these remorseful sellers trying to buy their shares back people sell and the shares go higher and they say ah, i made a mistake if it gets back to my level i'm going to buy my shares back the same price i sold them at so that way i could kind of erase the mistake when you gap through price levels, guess what? Well, no one trades because it didn't trade there. So you're not going to have the remorseful sellers from over here trying to buy back over here. So you, you might not have as many buyers as usual. So this goes with one of the things I always teach about. If a market makes a fast move up or a fast move down, so you can see here, fast move down, fast move up, gap down, and then we refill the gap right there. But if a market makes a big move and then trades sideways and then reverses and gets back to those same price levels coming in the opposite direction, there's a good chance that it makes another fast move. All right, let's just go look at our technology sector real quick over here. See what's going on there. Yeah, so this is something to really keep an eye on over here too. Look how clear this 210 level was. See, here we have resistance turning into support. Support. And now it's becoming resistance. So this, so this is our tech sector. This is the biggest sector in the market. We got this huge sell-off the other day, and there's still kind of no rebound. And importantly, we're trading below this important 210 level. So as long as XLK is below 210, the path of least resistance in the market is down. This is about 30% of the overall market. And let's look at the big three, Apple. Yeah, you want to talk about price levels. Look at this. So 218 was so precise there. Resistance becomes support. Yesterday, we got a sell-off. Where do we find a bottom? Low trade on the day, 217.48. And this level, this here actually, all right, I take that back. This is 217.50, right? Here, here, and literally got within pennies of it. I mean, when you, when you consider how big Apple is, $3.4 trillion, it's really kind of hard to believe that these price levels can be so precise. Like what was support over there becomes resistance here, resistance here becomes support here. But if you're a good trader, you understand this, and this comes from psychology, and the good traders know how to identify which price levels are important. Some levels are important, some levels aren't. This is the way the market works. Yeah, NVIDIA, it's kind of some weak action here too, right? So here's a level that was support and becomes resistance. Get the self, it's support again. Yesterday's action was kind of weak, because look, we got all the way up to there, and then the sellers pushed us all the way back down by the close. So this tells you that the sellers are still lurking out there. You know, they're taking advantage of any kind of strength to get out. Microsoft broke important support and look at today, right? 
what was the high trade today? Right on that line there. 412.41. So bottom here. It's all about the levels, people. All right, next biggest sector is healthcare. Well, it's either healthcare or financial. They just kind of switch back and forth. Yeah, see, this is some weak action. This doesn't surprise me at all. If you follow me, you know, we talked about this yesterday. So this is really weak action yesterday, right? Stock opens here, gets all the way up to here. But by the close, it's all the way back down and it closed below the opening price. Sometimes trends change over the course of a long time. That might show up on a chart as like a rounded top or a rounded bottom. Sometimes they change trend and, or change leadership, I should say, from bulls to bears in one day or two days. That's we, Sometimes we see what we call a reversal day. So I would define this as a reversal day. And then sure enough, look at the follow through today. So I think this was going up here because of uh, money that was coming out of tech was going into healthcare and into financials. Yeah, the financials are weak as well. So pretty interesting, but not surprising. Market looks pretty weak. I think it's going lower. Let's like take a quick look at our industrial sector. Yeah, wow, look at that. Probably going to be some ideas on the short side here in the industrial sector. So this is some really weak action. I'm surprised the S&P is not down more. But I guess because tech is holding on, holding up. It's, it's okay. Uh, look at our consumer discretionary sector. Yeah, this is going sideways. So those are the important things to watch, right? Will the reversals in financials and healthcare continue? I think so. Will XLK get back above that 210 level? My guess is no, but, you know, I could be wrong. The only person who's never wrong is the market. So I, having, I always say this all the time, having an opinion is a dangerous thing for a trader. Because if you have an opinion, it's going to alter the way you think. If you tell all your friends, oh, yeah, you know, market's going up, market's going up, market's going up. Well, that might cause you to subconsciously ignore things that might be contrary. You might not even realize it. It's It, it could be like a subconscious thing. Psychology is very important in trading. It's actually probably the most important thing for this type of trading. All right, everyone. Thanks. I'll see you soon.